Welcome, welcome back. Bienvenue and all that jazz. It's time to talk about the books that I plan to get to in the month of February. So I am trying to continue series this year and just keep chugging away on things. So a lot of these are series continuations that I started either in January or last year. And there's a big one on here that I have been reading for about three years now that I think I might actually finish in February, which would be just wild. So without any further ado, let's just jump straight into this list, shall we? So first up on the list, Chris from A Fictional Escapist is hosting a read-along in February, March, and April for the original Dragonlance, is it Legends Chronicles? It is the Dragonlance Chronicles. So in February, it is time for book one, Dragons of Autumn Twilight. This is, of course, by Margaret Weiss and Tracy Hickman. This was a favorite back in my junior high era, I would say, I think, maybe, I don't know. But this is very classic fantasy, except it is, I think the characters are a little bit older and we kind of start off with the characters coming back together from when they had separated after their adventuring days. And then there's an inciting incident in this town of... Haven? Solace? I don't know. <laughs> Something that means like a peaceful place of rest. I have no idea. And there's like a crystal staff and some weird draconian dragon, part dragon, part human thingies. And we kind of just go off on a very classic fantasy adventure. I haven't reread it ever. So I'm very excited to check out this world that I haven't been in in probably 20 plus years. And so it's just going to be a good old time. And so there is still plenty of time for you to get yourself a copy and jump along the read along with us. But it should be fun. Then just because I'm trying to continue and keep my momentum going, I would like to read The Tyranny of Faith by Richard Swan. This is book two in the Empire of the Wolf series. Book one was The Justice of Kings, which came out last year. And The Justice of Kings was good, but not great for me. It was kind of this interesting mashup of kind of murder mystery with low fantasy world and I just really wanted more of the fantasy tbh there was some kind of cool necromancy type magic and some cool just like voice based magic that I just I wanted to explore more of and the murder mystery itself felt kind of basic but like I was intrigued enough that I'm curious what happens next because I think we're going to start getting that kind of typical fantasy thing where we start very small and then we're going to rapidly expand to be much broader in scope of a story and so I'm just curious to see where it goes because I really don't know but I'm cautiously optimistic like I think I think I think I gave the Justice of Kings 3.75 or something it was close to a four star just not quite there so it was good just not great so who knows maybe I'll fall in love with the tyranny of faith but only one way to find out then in keeping up with the series that I am doing. I am following along with, I think it's Chapter 3 Podcast. It's the one that's hosted by Leanna and Bethany. They are currently doing a read-along for the Witcher series by Andrzej Sapkowski. And so it started with um, the first short story collection, which, <laughs> The Final Wish, in January. And so in February, it is continuing with Sword of Destiny. This is the second short story collection before we jump into the main series. And I had a lot of fun rereading The Final Wish. I have read this entire series before a couple years ago, but for whatever reason, it just like did not stick in my brain, like literally at all. And so this was the perfect excuse to like dive back in and kind of see how I feel about it. I think that the Witcher world is very political focused. And for whatever I remember, the main series really doesn't follow the titular Witcher all that much. It's like much more focused on kind of the inter-nation politics and the kind of wizard politics of it all and just kind of the ramifications of war and so I don't know but we'll see so I'm excited to continue I had like I said I had a lot of fun with book one and so I'm hoping that that fun continues with book two and this is the kind of cool illustrated edition where the colors of the illustrations I think kind of match the colors of the book so they have like a lot of blue highlights and stuff and I love blue but that's kind of <laughs> shallow but we'll see <laughs> then this is the biggie. So I was talking to Angela from Literature Science Alliance and Stephanie from Miss Richards Reads and they have been my accountability buddies or my accountability book buddies. I don't know, whatever, for the Wheel of Time because I had read book 11, The Knife of Dreams, all the way back in January 2022 and I did not continue with The Gathering Storm until November of 2022. So we decided in, I think, November that we wanted to kind of start the next book in this series sooner rather than later. And so as of today, I believe we are planning to actually read books 13 and 14. So that is Towers of Midnight and A Memory of Light. 
Those are the final two books in the Wheel of Time. And so if I manage to actually stick to this TBR, I will finish the Wheel of Time, which I started back in May of 2020. And so that would just be a massive series off my TBR. And it has been my excuse to not try some other large series <coughs> Malazan. So I don't know what we'll, we'll see what happens. If I manage to finish them, that's awesome. Book 12 really like reinvigorated a lot of us to see what happens next because you could just tell some of the pacing and some of the payoff from Mr. Brandon Sanderson just kind of hit better for all three of us and it kind of reminded Stephanie and I of what we loved about the Wheel of Time and so I just hope that that continues. I know that Brando Sando probably had the easier job with a bunch of notes from Robert Jordan and it was just getting to do all those fun climactic moments that Jordan had been building but I'm just excited to see how it ends. Like it has been such a long journey for the characters and for me and so I hope that we end on a high because that would be great. I'd love to want to reread The Wheel of Time someday. Who knows? So those are very high on my priority because it would just be nice to knock a friggin huge series off my list but we will see. Then up next is something that does not fit with my usual and so that is White Noise by Mr. Don DeLillo and I know absolutely nothing about this book except there's something about maybe Hitler studies and it's supposed to be satirical in nature. I don't know but I spent a lot of time playing Ghosts of Tsushima with my friend Elle and her husband Sean. Elle from Elliot Brooks obviously and so I feel bad because every time we're playing with Sean Elle and I are sitting here chatting about like random fantasy books and so I was like you want to know what Sean? I'll read a book that you like so we can talk about a book you like and this is the one that he chose. I don't know. Like I do not read general fiction. I'm not a general fiction girly. Like I have no idea what to expect from this but maybe I'll love it. I don't know. Then next up continuing my trend of continuing series in a more timely fashion I would like to read Mad Ship by Miss Robin Hobb. This is book two in the Live Ship Traders series. I read book one Ship of Magic in January and so I'm not going to tell you what I'm thinking about this series. You'll just have to wait for my wrap up next week. Will it be next week? I don't know. Whenever I do a wrap up for January, probably next week, you'll get to find out whether or not I'm loving, hating, ambivalent towards the Live Ship Trader series. So, but I plan to continue with Matchup next month. Then also just continuing series, I would like to read Feraline. This is book two in the Rise and Fall by Mr. Michael J. Sullivan. This is the series that chronologically follows the Legends of the First Empire, but in publication order wise, this is the fourth series in the larger Ryuria world. And I have been reading these books in in-world chronological order, not publication order. And I've just been enjoying my time watching how the legends have been morphed even just a few generations down the line. It's just super cool. And just hearing some of those callbacks to the characters that I really enjoyed in the Legends of the First Empire, it's just been a good old time. And so I'm really looking forward to just continuing with the world of Elan with Mr. Michael J. Sullivan. Okay, and then <laughs> Katya was sitting there screaming, so if you heard her in the background, I'm sorry, but she is here now. She demanded her screen time, so here she is. So let's just get her comfy and let's just chug along with the CBR. So up next, I'm trying to read at least one self-pub book per month. That's my goal, my dream, my aspiration. And so my self-pub book for February, I would like to read A Touch of Light by Tiago Abdallah. He is a Brazilian author and from what I gather from the blurb about this book we're really focused on kind of religion and how religion and politics can be intertwined and I think in this world they really are and we're looking a lot about attitudes towards death from different religious viewpoints and then there's maybe some kind of rising threat. There's griffins, there's a beautiful red cover. Who knows? I'm just gonna vibe. I hear a lot of good things about A Touch of Light and so I hope I also love it. And then before we do the mystery mug pick, I have one other book that if I have time I'd love to get back to this. So just like I said I've been trying to really continue on my series journey and so last year I started my reread of Keeper of the Lost Cities with Elle and so if we have time we're gonna slot in Exile which is book two of the Keeper of the Lost Cities series and if not it'll just be in March but if I have time I'd love to just get back into that whimsical middle grade world. It's just everything I love about middle grade. So if you don't know, Keeper of the Lost Cities is a middle grade series where we're following Sophie Foster, who is a elven child who has been kind of sent to the human world for unknown reasons. And one day other elves find her and take her back to the Lost Cities and we kind of get embroiled in Lost Cities politics. There's kind of an underground rebellion organization and it's very much just 
we're finding out about who Sophie is, why she was placed with the humans. We get to understand the viewpoints of the two kind of different sides of elven society. We get to have magical school setting, just all the middle grade whimsicalness that you could ever want. So I would highly recommend if you just love a whimsical middle grade time, The Keeper of the Lost Cities is great. They are ridiculously chonky for middle grade books though, so just know that you're kind of committing to like chonky thick boys when you're committing to the Keeper of the Lost Cities. And I, I guess since I have Katya before I kind of like dump her out of the room so I can grab the mug, uh, I am also kind of getting back into my manga groove. So I used to love reading a ton of manga in like junior high, high school. I have like a whole shelf that you very rarely see of my manga collection of just manga that I love. And so recently, I have been getting back into manga, and again, Elle has been kind of convincing me to try a couple different series. So I started Yona of the Dawn, and I started Witch Hat Atelier, and spoiler alert, I love them both, and I want to be continuing with them. And so in the month of February, I would like to read volumes 6 through 10 of both of those series. But for full thoughts, stay tuned for my January wrap-up. And now everybody say bye to Katya. Bye! Because I'm going to grab the mug and do the mug pick real quick. Okay, well now I'm covered in cat fur, so sorry about it. But now we have our wonderful mug of mysteries. So at the beginning of the year, I asked just, I think, on my Instagram, my community tab, my Twitter, all of it, just for book recommendations. And so then I did a video where I allowed RN Jesus to pick 12 of them that I then put on little slips and put in here. And so every month I'm just going to pick one of these bad boys to read that month. And hopefully you guys don't hate me and you picked books that you think I'd actually like and not books that you think will elicit rage. I'm looking at you, Jack. <laughs> oh, they're kind of bunching together. Okay, well, let's... <laughs> For a second I thought I like launched half of them across the room. And then that would be really funny in editing. But let's see. Do, do, do. We'll pick this stubborn one. So let's see. Okay, so we got The Golden Key by Melanie Ron, Jennifer Robertson, and Kate Elliott. I really don't know that I've ever heard anything about this book. I think it's more classic fantasy, which I love. So thank you for whoever recommended it to me. I now need to figure out, hopefully my library has a copy of this, unlike the pick from January, because you people hate me now. <laughs> so Stay tuned. I will try to get my hands on this and read this in the month of February. And again, just thank you everybody who submitted books for me to read. I really appreciate it. But that will conclude my very ambitious TBR for February. I don't know. We'll see. Like, I'm in the final four months. Like, it's countdown T minus four months to when I'm supposed to be defending my PhD thesis. And so if anxiety brain kicks in or stress brain kicks in and I decide to just completely go off TBR and just read whatever brings warm fuzzies to my heart, I am going to do so and I'm not even going to feel bad about it. So how about that? But I am really excited about all the books on this list and I hope I love them and can get to them. Let me know some books that you're excited to get to in the month of February or which of these I should prioritize. Or if you just want to say hello and leave an emoji, why don't you leave, um, is there a key? Since the last, since the like fun little mug pick for the month is the golden key, if there's anything key-like. Let's do that. Leave a key if you want to leave an emoji. But that will do it for today's video. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more bookish shenanigans like this from moi. Other than that, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!